Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome to a new episode of Female Solopreneurs Growing Their Business. This episode is for you if you know that you are a master manifester or maybe you suspect it or you're just curious what is a master manifester and today is more about how we have to be careful when manifesting because manifesting goes both ways right we can manifest amazing beautiful powerful things into existence but also the opposite and everything in between and so much has been shared in the online spaces, in books, about the amazing case studies. And I'm one of those people who has been frequently sharing about the amazing things I created into existence, be it in my business, be it in my private life. I've been quite outspoken about all the little things I've been manifesting, all the big things. And today, though, the focus will be on the things I'm not so proud about, the things I manifested that were bad for me, and also bad for other people because as I dive into what master manifestors are you will see that we don't just manifest for ourselves we have the capacity to influence and impact other people with our manifestations so I want you to listen to this podcast episode through the lens of knowing that I have been sharing a lot of positive stuff around manifesting. I have a whole book called Universe in You, 11 Steps to Co-Create the Life You Desire. That is a beautiful book that takes you through 12 recorded meditations that take you through the whole co-creation manifesting journey. And it's all positive messages to really help you and empower you to manifest the things that you desire in your life. So if you are more into, oh, I want to learn how to manifest or I really want more positive messages, then that book is for you. Today is more about the things that can go wrong. So feel free to discard this message or to not listen to it if you're not in the frame of mind to, to listen to that right now. I really honor where people are at and not everybody is into listening to some negative things. So having said all that... <laughs> Let's dive into master manifestors. Master manifestors are not necessarily people who are aware that they are master manifestors. In fact, they wouldn't even call themselves as such. My best friend, for example, she I'm pretty sure she has never read one single manifesting book. She's not the one, you know, who's uh, on the internet researching these things. Like she's not in the spiritual circle. She's a super rational, beautiful, level-headed woman, super successful in her career. For example, she's amazing at manifesting careers and like really the things she wants to have in her life. Once I was living in Portugal and it was during the pandemic so she could work remotely and she had decided to come for a month. And she was looking for a place to stay in Porto where I was living. She didn't know where I was living in Porto. She just knew that I was in that city and at some point it was getting close to her arriving and she was sharing with me where she had found a place <laughs> and she shared with me the address I was like hold on a minute that just that sounds odd because that's my address like it's exactly the street and my house number like did you mix up something that I share with you my address and you copy pasted it into the message thinking it was your own address but she was like no that is my address too and then we figured she had manifested herself into the exact same building on the top floor and that's where she stayed for a whole month and the city of Porto is quite big, right? What are the chances of her ending up in exactly the same building in the middle of a pandemic where everything was free also, right? Nobody was traveling at that moment, everything was closed, the borders were closed, yet she managed to find exactly the apartment she wanted, exactly where I was. And that happened to her twice, so with another friend as well. So she's a master manifester, even though she's not consciously doing it or she doesn't constantly talk about it. There's a lot of people out there who are master manifestors and who are not the you know typical spiritual people who keep talking about it. So I don't want anybody to think of master manifestors as people who are like deeply spiritual or into yoga or you know all the traditional spiritual things. Master manifestors are people who have a lot of 
life force energy a lot of spiritual energy even if they wouldn't call themselves spiritual but they have this enormous energy field around them that magnetizes things towards them or repel things away from them so these people have a lot of energy when they manifest through good emotions through visualizing positive things they magnetize the things they want on the contrary of that if they have bad emotions bad feelings negative thoughts they will instantly manifest that which they do not want <laughs> and that is what i wanted to focus on today what happens when we do not have our emotions under control and i will give specific case studies today as to what is happening then and so for me i by design i am a master manifester my life path number is 22 which is the master builder, the master manifester, the one who's here to build things and to create things into existence and be successful with it and to master that manifesting co-creation energy and not just for myself, but to teach it to other people, to my clients, to my readers, right? So for me, it's this ongoing thing of learning and passing on the learnings that I learned through the last decade where I've been practicing all of these things and living my life by by design so i have another friend who is a dear 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 friend she also is a master manifester we were hanging out in geneva where i was based for a long time and we drove to the mountains in the french alps which was one hour away from geneva and we spent the whole day there in the mountains having fun catching up enjoying the mountain energy and really enjoying each other's company and in the evening we drove back to geneva and at some point this friend she got into a memory about how she was driving a bicycle in geneva and got stopped by the police and for those of you who do not know switzerland is a beautiful country but they are also very precise with their laws very strict in reinforcing those laws and so she did like a minor mistake on the bike i don't even remember what it was you know something like not stopping at a stop shield or something like that and not only did the police stop her for that they actually fined her so she had to pay quite a significant amount of money <laughs> because of that minor thing that she did and she got quite into the story she got emotional about it not in a way that she's crying of course but you know we were talking about it for probably five six seven minutes quite engaged about this switzerland and how it's so strict and so i was right there with her because i had lived there and i knew this about switzerland and as the conversation was getting charged more and more charged emotionally suddenly i look and there's a police car stopped on the side of the road and it was weird because it was evening the street was almost empty there was nothing going on otherwise yet this police car was there with their flashlights on and just before that car was a bicycle and the guy who had been on that bicycle had been stopped by the police instantly i knew we manifested this we are master manifestors and when we come together we have even more energy to manifest and so unfortunately in this episode we manifested a collective energy field that was bad that was negative and the universe showed us right away that we used that energy for a bad purpose and in fact we co-created this experience for somebody else it was this immediate download that just told me you as master manifestors you not just manifest for yourselves but for the collective field of all the people around you even if we don't know the person you know it, the person was close enough to our energy field and we manifested this and it was a teachable moment and also my friend like instantly when i told her that we manifested this she knew this was true and we just looked at each other i was like holy moly <laughs> like shocked you know in equal measures as also finding it slightly entertaining because it was a teachable moment for us 
And we knew going forward, we had to pay attention to how we share stories, whether it is from a point of, yeah, you know what, I experienced something that was shitty in the moment, but I have dealt with it, I digested it. Now when I share the story with somebody, it's from a point of neutrality. There's no charge around the actual story any longer. And so sharing a story without the charge means it's safer for the listener or the receiver of the story and for the collective field, right? So we knew that from that moment on. Yet, maybe a couple of months to a year later, she shared another story that had happened to her recently this winter when she went with some friends to the mountains again. <laughs> and she remembered a episode where she was on a ski lift and got caught up on the ski lift, like her jacket or her backpack, something got caught up with the ski lift and she couldn't exit the ski lift once it arrived so it was quite a dangerous situation for her because she was being dragged on by the ski lift while it was going down and you know it could have been super harmful but she managed to get off the ski lift and enjoy her day in the mountains but she was sharing the stories with her friends in the ski lift while they were going up the mountain and she was again she was still emotional about it or there was still a charge around the story while she was sharing it with her friends and the minute they get up into the mountain the ski lift stops her friend gets caught up with their backpack in the ski lift and exactly the same thing happened to them that they got dragged on by the ski lift and it could have ended badly and luckily it didn't but <laughs> it was the exact same thing and as she shared the story we both knew she had manifested it for them and again, we both repeated how important it is that we have our emotions under control, that we process them before we share it with others, because we influence other people with our emotions and the charge around these emotions. And of course, we are just human beings, right? Even as master manifestors and by talking about it, being aware of it, we are still processing life, digesting life. Sometimes we just want to share from that space of, oh my God, you know what happened to me? <laughs> And even though I'm so aware of it by now, just this Monday, so two days ago now, um, when I'm recording this, we had come back from Denmark on the Sunday and on the Monday, it was Easter Monday, my boyfriend, he wanted to put petrol into the car and do some food shopping for us so we could chill the rest of the day and yeah, enjoy our you know last holiday before we start work again. And so he left. And he had to go to the biggest city, which is one hour and a half away. So he decided to do the food shopping there. And then he came back, put everything in his car with the key in the boot and closed the door. And then the key was locked inside the car and he couldn't get inside anymore. And my dog was trapped inside of the car too. So there was no way of him just leaving the car, taking a bus back to the island. And we go pick up the car the next day because of my dog. So he calls me absolutely emotional. I try to figure out what to do. I try to call the local locksmith who wasn't picking up because it was Easter Monday and there didn't seem to be an emergency service. Same for the local police. There was nobody picking up. And I was trying to figure out if there's a bus leaving the island. Luckily, we found there was one only four times per day, but it was a hike away from my home, 40 minutes of hiking through nature to find that bus stop. And while I was waiting for the bus, I was just so emotionally charged with everything that was happening that I decided, let's use that time to catch up with my friend. And I sent her a voice note of everything that was happening, including that I was upset because I was standing on the street, hoping that I would find a car that was also going to the bigger city because that would spare me so much time. And so I tried to stop a car that was uh, coming and usually, you know, when a woman stands by the street and tries to stop a car in other countries, uh, they would stop. But here they did it. They just continued. They looked at me, they saw me and they continued their journey without even asking, um, how can they help? No. So I was upset about that. <laughs> and I shared that with my friend from that space of being upset. Then the bus came, I got in, the voice message uh, was sent and not long after that my friend was listening to the message and she replied very soon 
and she said she she again went into but why didn't you find the locksmith and then she was like sharing a message for one minute or so and in the middle of a sentence it got cut off and there was no message after that the whole evening so i was like that's weird you know she doesn't do this normally she sends full messages and doesn't get cut off in the middle of a sentence so i was getting worried already and the next morning i sent her another message saying hey are you okay you know the message was cut off and then she sends a message back saying look i listened to your message then i went outside i had to bring some uh, garbage to some container by car and i was sending you that message and then when i got back i went into the lift and i lost my keys in the lift it went through a hole in the floor so all her keys were gone she couldn't get into her apartment she was locked out it was easter monday so same day as for me and any local there were no local locksmiths around either the next one she found was 40 minutes away that had an emergency service and he would come but he also would charge 1000 euros and that's a lot of money for like 20 seconds of opening a door but she had no other option she paid the 1000 euros it was completely emotional of course as well because it was a lot of money and just a shitty situation to be in and instantly as she was sharing this i had this bad feeling i was like oh my god did we manifest this like did i share this message out of an emotional space yes she received that charge that emotional charge the frequency of being upset and instantly she and her whole energetic field around her must have picked up on that frequency and she manifested the same thing for herself and I have to be more mindful about how I share information and of course master manifestors they also have to learn how to receive messages should they be you know in an emotional charge we need to learn how to protect our energy to not absorb it so as not to manifest the same thing and that really is also the reason why I'm sharing this episode now because it's a two-way process as master manifestors we have to be more mindful of how we share information Ideally, it's from a place of, a, yeah, place of having digested the information already, having mastered our emotions already, and sharing from a place of neutrality. Especially when we're speaking to other master manifestors, <laughs> so that is so important. But also as master manifestors, as we receive charged messages, which is only human, right? Sometimes people are emotional, our friends are emotional, family members are emotional. We have to be aware of that, that our energy field will be affected immediately by that frequency. And we have to be aware of that and to receive that message from a place of, look, this is emotionally charged. I am setting the intention to neutralize that energy while the person is speaking and we can do that we have the power so we have to neutralize the energy listen to it from a place of detachment yeah it's our friend or family member who's going through things but it's not our energy and we are protected we are in our own frequency and we are not absorbing the other person's frequency and worst case if we feel we cannot do that right now because of whatever reason we can stop the message or the conversation without feeling guilty and saying i'm so sorry i do not have the capacity right now to listen to this um, let's come back later share this message with me later from a place of where you are more neutral or give me the time to find the space where i can hold my own frequency without the fear of absorbing yours and those are the kind of conscious conversations that we need to have and where we also do not want to feel guilty about having them because yeah we want to be good family members we want to be good friends we want to be there whenever somebody needs us but it's not in our or our friend's interest to keep manifesting bad things because of it right so think about that reflect on this uh, in your own life how you've been manifesting things how you've been sharing information or for your master manifesting friends and family members how it was for them maybe you remember episodes where you also didn't manifest great things for other people and yeah it's embarrassing to share right i'm not here proud of me 
because I knew already that I have this capacity and yet I probably caused this incident to my dear friend who was not in a good frame of mind to receive that message herself and yeah I should have warned her that there's emotional message coming listen only to it you know once you're in a good space or even share it only once I digested it myself so big learning curve again and I'm sharing this in the hopes that it might help some of you out there so you're more conscious of how you share information and how you manifest things into existence and that it's not always just you know pretty unicorns and manifesting amazing things which is great to share and it's fun to share and I do that of course a lot but there's also everything in between and the bad things and yeah so let me know wherever you're listening to this uh, either in the comments below have you manifested bad things for yourself or other people there should also be a link on the podcast to share a voice message so if you want to do that you can click on that link and share a voice message about any experiences you had that way i can create a second episode and share those voice messages so have a beautiful day everyone mm-hmm.